Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening for the April 21st meeting, regular meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee. If everybody would rise. Thank you. Since we have a few new faces here tonight, I'm going to do as I always do and start at one end of the table and have everyone introduce themselves. I'll start down this end with Glenn. Uh, Glenn Farrell. Bob Ladd. Sonny Kravitz. <coughs> Jerry's on our here. Mike Wolf. Steve LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen, Lat Eileen Latimer. Brian Lapham. Bill Bean. Jones. Mike Pierce. Jones. Scott Blair. Nick Bridal. Thank you. And, gentlemen, I'm going to go through this quickly tonight. It might be a short meeting. Um, on the agenda, right off the bat, as everybody knows, we have one position still remaining to be filled. And for anyone who doesn't know, our process for that is usually to ask the public and who would like to have that position, and we then elect from those choices here in committee um, rather than just appoint. Uh, we have two candidates that have contacted me. Both are known to everyone here. Um, unfortunately, both of them had prior commitments and could not be here tonight, but have expressed their interest. I have their emails here um, saying that they are interested, and I would like to fill those positions and put those two names out tonight for election. That's okay. Who are the uh, applicants? The two applicants, and like I say, these are two people known very well to everyone here. The first applicant is David Lang, and the second applicant is Jim O'Laughlin. You're taking nominations now? And I would be taking nominations now, unless do we need any discussion. I mean, the men are not here to speak for themselves. Right. Um, both have expressed an interest based on what they've seen. Um, well, I would nominate Jim O'Laughlin. I did have a conversation with him after the uh, election, and he expressed an interest at that I'll time. Second that. Okay. I have one question before we get too carried away. Have we? Is this the first time we mentioned to the public that we have openings? No, no. we mentioned it at the last meeting. It's yeah. been posted since the end of March. Thank we you. mentioned it at the meeting. Um, it's been hanging on the board since March 23rd. Uh, which was two days after our last meeting. Uh, Madam Chairman, I'd like to, if you recognize me, I'd say something. Okay. I don't want to just break in, you know. No. Nope. My only concern is that we're going to be dropping to nine people in uh, 17, right? Mm hmm So maybe we don't have anybody this year. We just forgo that one position. We can't. I did have that question, Jerry, and I've been on... Um, several of the legal issues involved with that the reduction in the size and I've been told in more than one place that we do have to fill that seat this year oh. okay um, the only thing is the madam chairman in statute doesn't say when you have to do it that's true the law requires right. well, us to fill it, it but it doesn't, doesn't require it doesn't frame. say when mm -hmm. we right. had said at the last meeting we gave a deadline okay. for yesterday it's for um, and it's for just the remainder of this term. It's for you know, a one-year Until next March. Yeah. You nominated Jim O'Loughlin. Okay. Yeah. And you're second. Mm -hmm. Well, that being the case, I would second your motion, Tom. Thank you. Well, I already seconded it. So it was already seconded. Oh, it's already seconded. Yeah. I have three seconds. I'm sorry. That. All right. <laughs> so just so we have it, you made the motion, Tim? Yes. And the second? Steve with Steve. Yeah. Madam Chair, I'd like to nominate Dave Lang for the position. A second. When we vote, do we get to vote for each candidate? Yeah, we'll do an alphabetical one. No, I mean, do we get to cast the vote on each candidate? <coughs> well, I don't see why not. Well, we'll do it the way we've always done it. We vote for one first. Yeah. And then both of, if that one doesn't go, we'll do an alphabetical <coughs> order. I guess I didn't ask the question correctly. I'll try again. 
If I vote for candidate number one, am I still entitled to vote for candidate number two? What's the sense to Tim? Where are we, we going with simple? that? We're going to put one person. <laughs> I know, he, I just you know, I don't know want to spend two hours on this. We're going to put one candidate the out there, are. and we'll have a vote on that candidate. Should that candidate not get the majority? I have a suggestion. Why don't, since neither, can't be a secret ballot. Well, since neither of them, the candidates are here, why don't we just table it till the next, next meeting when we can? Oh, I'm not in favor of that. I don't do that. I don't, I don't know that that'll change anything. I don't either. Where they're both known, I don't know. Well, we, all, we already have the motions and seconds right. for each, so we need to put one up at a time and go well, for not it. Not only that, it would give the opportunity for the new candidate to be sworn in before exactly the next meeting. Exactly. Right. They don't want to drag yeah. it out any further. Good We've got point. some important things to do here. Okay. All right. So we have two names out there, Jim O'Loughlin and David Lang. And as far as the voting goes, um, I would say you can only cast one vote. So it's, it's the only way it doesn't get complicated, all right? So all those in favor in alphabetical order of Dave Lang? And all the, all those in favor. And those in favor of Jim O'Laughlin. Okay, keep your hands up so they can be recorded. Count me in. Okay. So I will notify Jim O'Laughlin. Thank you. Have you got the numbers on that? Okay. We'll be gentle on Brian. We've got to make sure that he gets the votes if we take any, any actions tonight. And that way, Jim can be sworn in at the next meeting, or well, before the next meeting. In the meantime, Glenn has been sworn in, and Scott has been sworn in, and they're with us tonight with full voting privileges. All right. Um, moving on. Tonight we were supposed to have Ed Tinker with us, and I spoke to Ed yesterday, and we were still in action. And I know you're going to do it. You wanted to do it in the selectmen's report, but since that is the major part of the agenda tonight, um, Phil, you said you've got some news yeah, on that. Um, if you want to, I'll, I'll address that in my selectmen's report. If we are moving to. Uh, um, oh, we're there now. Number we're five. So the selectmen's report. Good evening, Madam Chair, uh, members. Uh, in accordance with the April 21st, 2015 Board of Selectmen's agenda under Roman 5, report from the Selectmen's representative. Uh, I have replaced Selectman Woolsey uh, with the vote of Chairman Griffin, Selectman Waddell, and Selectman Bridal as this board's rep, the Selectman board's rep, as uh, Selectman Woolsey declined to continue service in her own right. Last year, I served as board of the, uh, chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and the board executed the Selectmen's budget process to include warrants with department head development, production, town manager scrub approval, and the unanimous vote approval of the Board of Selectmen. We listened carefully to the department heads and town manager and arrived at the unanimous budget vote by the Board of Selectmen. The budget committee under Chairman Latter and Latimer listened to the same information and data from department heads and the town manager. At the 11th hour, the Chairman Latimer uh, motioned uh, and proposed the uh, slashing of that proposed budget um, that was forwarded by the selectmen, by the town manager, and by department by some $700,000. Plenty of order. Part, pardon me, I have the floor. Town voters subsequently and dramatically reduced the size of the budget committee in support of a private citizen warrant by petition. In addition to the budget committee, uh, reduction of that proposed budget uh, by the 700000 Town manager and department heads are now confronted with a $500,000 snowstorm expense and challenge to their operating budget. Further, fire, police, public works are commanded by experienced new department head leadership and have just executed brilliantly in the harshest catastrophic weather in history. Summer surge operations planning have commenced. There's no rest period for department leadership or town employees as we advance into our summer surge and our summer operations. 
The town manager, Mr. Welch, has operational and administrative command of all departments except assessing and legal. Reporting to the Board of Selectmen that report to the citizens of Hampton. Assessing and legal departments are under the operational and administrative control of the Board of Selectmen. Going forward, a very strong suggestion to this board and the past muster with Selectman Griffin this morning and the town manager, Mr. Welch, staff lines of communication, department leadership, efficiency, operational effectiveness, budget committee, situational awareness, transparency, and taxpayer interest will be served best by a format approved, again, both by the chairman Griffin this morning and the town manager Welch this morning. Request by the Budget Committee for Information will simply administrate in writing through the Budget Chair, Latimer, to the Town Manager with a copy to Chairman Griffin and the Selectman's Representative for all Department Heads except Assessing and Legal. Similarly, Assessing and Legal Department written requests for information from the Budget Committee will be made to Chairman Griffin, the Selectman's Representative, and a copy to the Town Manager through the Budget Committee Chair, again, Chairman Latimer, for situational awareness. Thank you very much for your time. Good night. How can we submit information um, to you if you leave? One, one moment. Good night. Thank you. Have a good night. <clears throat> good night, Phil of Bean. You Mr. know, Bean. I'm going to take... Phil of Bean, Excuse yeah. me, gentlemen. I'm going to take a very rare opportunity to be critical. If this is how we are setting the year in motion, it's a bad one. Having an empty seat here has absolutely no value. What I just heard amounted to a critique on last year, and I never got to even ask the question whether I was big, being given a mandate. I'm going to drop it for the. I'm going to drop saying anything else because right now I'm not happy. Well, we essentially do not have a selectman's rep. Right? We essentially do not have a selectman's rep, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to find out what to do next because we will not, and I mean that to the public, we will not be treated like this. This is not what the statutes say, and I'm sorry I listened to the critique. I thought rather well, I think we all but the vote is... They critiqued it. They critiqued it themselves. Mm -hmm. That's who we listened to. That's how we did our budget last year. And that was the end result. Mm -hmm. I will continue to listen to the voters, as I know all of you will. And we will do it with open minds. We will not shun our responsibility, but we will not be treated in this fashion either. I'm sorry I don't have an instant fix sitting here as your chairman, I promise to get you one, but this was not responsible as far as I'm concerned. You can try to take apart this committee, but this is the best representation that the public has as far as the budget is concerned. This is not my choice on how to start the year, and I don't know that I got an explanation as to Ed Tinker. And believe it or not, that was a conversation between me and a department head on how to put this year on a good course, how to put it on a positive track. And quite honestly, what he was going to come in here and give you this evening, and what we had discussed, I'm not going to speak for him, but what this discussion was about is that Hampton has had a lot of building going on. And because it's had a lot of building going on, a lot of those properties are now hitting the tax rolls and giving us extra income that did not exist before. I felt and he felt it was very important to let you know that. Because as we go forward this year, you can do two things. You can help to use that to keep the tax rate level, knowing you have extra income coming in. Or you can use some of that or keep that in mind and possibly address some of the things that we have fallen behind with. But the attempt was, much as I did last year when we scheduled it, to start out with, if you want to look at it, the state of the, econo the economy where Hampton is concerned with what we have on the tax rolls and he was also going to explain <coughs> the revaluation. 
it's very unfortunate that the Board of Selectmen have chosen this course and stripped this committee of that, something they don't have the power to do. Well, Are you sure it's the Board of Selectmen or Mr. Bean? Because I recall a couple of years ago when he was the rep, he didn't attend also. Yeah. I suspect this. Raise it with the Board of Selectmen well, you know publicly. What? Mm -hmm. Right now, I have no answers for any of no, you I, on I it. I understand I that. promise you that. We just have to take action on it. You know, I mean, yeah. the, the Board yeah. has a responsibility. The Board of Selectmen has a responsibility to provide. They have no responsibility as far as the Budget Committee goes. What they have is a voting representative That's to the right. Budget Committee. So they, what we have as an elected body is an autonomous responsibility to develop the budget. What I heard in that is that the selectmen are basically going to tell us what to do when all of us are charged with making the budget. But you know, we'll have the next session and get into get into things. I'm not going to say any more on this tonight. And we'll just have to reschedule it. Exactly, Jerry. You know, move on from there. Madam Chairman. Yeah. I'd like to change the subject temporarily. Yeah. To something else. Being Ed isn't here. I will share with you some information I have about the tax rate. The town portion of the tax rate will rise from 724 to 831 if there's no increase in the tax base. That's a dollar and some change, okay? Or a 350. Michael, where is that from? This is research done from the all the spreadsheets and the uh, the Warren articles and the budget that was passed. But is that summer. something that we know for sure? I know this to be absolute fact. Okay. And I'll stick my life on it, okay? Or a 353 increase on an average assessed value single home of $330. In other words, approximately 1% of the value of your house. If the tax base increases by 1.5 due to new construction, which I've heard is probably not going to make that by a country mile. Is that 1.5% or 1.5%? 1.5% yeah. due to new construction. Three billion. An increase of about 41 million. The tax rate would go go from 724 to 818, or a 310 increase on the average assessed value of a single family home of $330,000, and this is like gospel. Is this driven by the the uh, the next old thing, where the uh, the Seabrook uh, plant is no? No, this is just based on. All the Warren articles. On the Warren the articles budget. we bought. Yeah, well, the Warren okay. articles are and the spending. All right. Million. I'm going to bring this back to order. All right. I thought that was something else, Michael. Um, I'm going to move on with the report, and we'll take anything else under, up under new and old business. Well, let's finish what we have here. Um, Jerry? Uh, the only thing I have to say from the school board point of view is that, of course, we have enacted the. Um, Common Core curriculum, which really I endorse myself, and so does the rest of the board. And we have given our first round of the Smarter Balance testing to, I think, four grades by now. Two in the uh, Marston, and I think two in the Hampton Academy. I think I might have that wrong, but and um, the kids seem to take to it pretty well. The Smarter Balance testing. The teachers were a little nervous about it. I understand. But the kids already have got good keyboard skills because they've already been given notebooks, so they, they took to it pretty well from what I understand. How that came out and how it scored is something else, I don't know. The smarter balance testing is not, you're not going to get a grade. What you're going to get is where that child is from a growth point of view, from a competency point of view, from a growth point of view. And the next time you give the test, you're going to see if he's grown or she's grown. It's a growth thing. It's when they, when they answer the questions, if they answer the questions correctly, the questions will get a little stronger. If they answer the questions inaccurately, the questions will get a little easier. And at the end, the child will be pretty well understood in terms of where they are. So the next time the test is given, I think it's given once a year, I'm not sure, then they'll have another, another dot on the map, so to speak. It's 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 its major purpose is to see the growth of the child in terms of what's presented in terms of the material, as opposed to giving a, a score as it currently does with the kneecap testing. So the tests have been given, as far as I know, the kids took to it pretty well. 
Uh, countrywide, I, I hear various things about the tests, but uh, we'll have to see how it shakes out. Like any new change that goes in the Common Core curriculum as well as the Smarter Balanced Testing that goes with it, there's going to be moans and groans. There's going to be things that need to be changed. There's going to be test questions that are going to have to be altered and rephrased. It, it's, <coughs> it's, it's feedback that has to go back to make it better. And over a period of a year or two or three, they'll have it down pretty well, I'm sure. But the smart about the Common Core is 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 trying to feature uh, kids so that when they get out of high school, they're either career ready or college ready. They're trying to feature math, language arts, which is English presentation, writing skills, reading skills, and science, as well as computer technology, are your major thrusts with this Common Core. And uh, as you know, we've read in the paper many times over the last year or two or three, the junior college, community college uh, presidents are saying the kids are not math ready. They cannot start a community college curriculum coming out of high school. They have to take remedial courses to start a curriculum. We hear that. They've heard it in the State Department of Education and they've heard it across the country. That's why Common Core has, has slid into place and it's meeting resistance in various places, especially in New York, from what I read, uh, Long Island uh, heavily, and then throughout New York. But it, it has to be given a chance to work. What we've been teaching and what we've been doing apparently doesn't work uh, as seen. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what's happening. That's what's been happening over the last uh, month or so. Um, and uh, that's kind of where that is. Okay. Cherry, how's the budget holding up? The budget, our budget, school board budget is yeah. right on money. I watch that. It's discussed every we, We're As a matter of fact, we have a large positive variance right now, mainly due to insurances that were stated because we had the percentages, yeah. and then they didn't come in. They came in lower, health insurances, blah, blah, blah. So we're running about a $600,000 positive variance right now. Half of that's coming from the, uh, the uh, insurances for the most part. And... Uh, and, I'm, and we have a child that's out of uh, out of district because they need special needs, and that's costing us some money. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're that's a budget line item that's negative, a negative variance. But, so we looked at it, and we understand that. Did you take that out? Are you taking that out of the budget, or are you? That's going that's to hitting take the budget. That out of the. No, that's hitting the budget. That's going to go as a negative variance on that line item. But we have such a large positive variance on the other end, we got it covered. Okay, because I know you have the Warren article that funded that too. Yeah, well. Yeah. But that's what I'm getting out of you using those funds. Are you just taking it out of the budget? Right out of the operating budget. Okay. For. Um, As a matter of fact. Our two new members on our committee. One difference between the school budget and our operating budget is at the end of the year, whatever is left with the schools does go back. Yes, it does. To the taxpayers. Yeah where it goes into the un undesignated funds with the town budget. So there is a return of what isn't used, which sometimes lets us have a little bit more leeway knowing that it will come back. So the concern is as it's being spent to keep tabs on I think on the budget it. is well put together. Mm -hmm. It's well managed. We've got two good leaders there with the <coughs> superintendent and Nate. And of course, I look at every line item every month that's reported, and I'm right there to see that everything is in place, which it is. I feel I feel good about that SAU 90 situation and about its budget. By the way, I have looked at the town's budget through March, and I have some comments on that when you're ready to take them. Um, yeah, I actually didn't put it on this agenda. Did you? But maybe um, if you all have a copy of it. I went up and got my copy because I was afraid they might be thrown away. <laughs> yeah. I have two questions. That's the monthly Do you have anything to more, Jerry, Dad, from the school? Not from the school. Is it a school question? Yes, it is. You said something about you get them ready for college or whatever. Oh, well, career. Yeah. Career or college, yeah. yeah. Now, the question is, being we're in SA United in Hampton, how does Winnicunit play into that? Oh, they got Common Core, too. Aren't they doing it, approaching it the same way you are, this common sense or whatever it's called? Well, smarter balance testing. Smarter oh, yeah. balance. Yeah, yeah. They're using the same thing. Yep. Okay. And uh, um, they've got some resistance there, too. Uh, you know, people, first of all, it represents change, okay? And the curriculum is changing, and the testing is changing. So and you know how people are with change. Yeah, everybody, it's human yeah. nature to, to, to be apprehensive about it and to fight it initially and so on and so forth. But I, I think I, 
I think Hampton Academy has come in with a program a couple of weeks ago at a school board meeting that's going to knock us. It's a beautifully set up uh, c curriculum and how they're approaching it. They were, a group of teachers got together with leadership with Dave and superintendent. They really put together a strong program. I'm proud of that uh, program they put together and that plan. Uh, how they're going to approach this common core. They're really going to stress the language arts, the reading, presentation, writing, speaking, and math and science and and computer, of course, technology is, is we're working on that. I've asked the uh, superintendent to speak to the technology director to uh, to make sure now that we got technology in our hands, what are we expecting by grade level? What is our mission? What's our goal? And how do we measure it by grade level so that we know what a third grader is supposed to we want? What do we want a third grader to know when they move from third to fourth or fourth to fifth and so on through eighth to ninth? What skills and competencies do we want in place? And how do we measure to see that they're in place? We've got the technology now. Let's commit this to paper, exactly what uh, we're expecting. And they're working on that. They're working on that technology plan now. So have you seen the plan that when it comes putting for it to follow through, like you're saying? It sounds great at 90, but how about... I don't know. I, I don't know about when I count it. I don't focus on SAU yeah. 21. We don't have anything to do oh, with that I know, budget. but if, if, if you're doing a good job up to grade 8, and then it all falls apart at 9 through 12, it seems uh, like we have a chance. It seems it like there need, needs to be some coordination there somehow. Well, there is. We do coordinate. Uh, the 8th grade, uh, grade coordinates with ninth grade. In other words, the, the, the faculty and the administration make sure right. that oh, okay. the product that we're giving you is the best we're going to be able to, we can, right. and that we want to know what your needs are, what would you like us to concentrate on, what do you see, our weaknesses, or whatever, so that we can make sure when we transition you to ninth grade anyway, right. it's our best possible product. Good job. Now, once they're there, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, um, it, it, they're going to focus on, they're focusing on Common Core. It's a statewide program. So they've got to do the Common Core as well in smarter balance testing, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be an eye-opener across the United States, you know, because the idea is to make state to state to state somewhat uniform in terms of what they're offering and, and how they appraise the people. Our kids, I should is, say. Is this something, Jerry, that we're going to see money needed for this year? No. No? Mm -hmm. So it won't have a financial impact? No, no. Okay. No. Thank you. Money's been spent. Thank uh, you. Know, you. And, getting, and getting prepared and books and whatever and computer notebooks. Money's been spent over the last year. year, year so it's year, done. To phase it in. Uh, of course. Yeah. One thing we did, which I really liked, instead of sitting the kids down for four, five, six hours to take an exam, we gave it to them in one hour intervals over a period of six or seven days. <clears throat> Oh, that's a smart way to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, kids can't sit more yeah. than that. Yeah. No, that's and whereas uh, other schools are giving it two, three days at a time, these kids are being uh, tested. Mm -hmm. Speaking to London there, my daughter works in London, there, and she said they had them for two or three days doing nothing but smarter balance testing. Uh, and I, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I like the idea of one hour and then one hour, and you know, so they. Yeah, you know. so they're ready for it. Yeah, I mean, they don't get fatigued, they don't get tired, they don't get bored. They don't start doing things crazy, just finish it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kids are. So uh, we got some very good uh, management in place there and uh, doing some good things. And while the test was being administered, we had our technology director and his helpers, if you will, the people that he has, walk in the corridors to make sure that if anybody had any computer problems or notebook problems or blah, 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 they were technically supported. How are those notebooks doing, by the way? They're doing fantastic. How many have uh, lost and broken? Five or six. Yeah. But Five not, or six windows are broken. Yeah, well, you know that. But we knew that. Out, yeah. We figured that. Yeah, but it worked out okay. We're trying to get a, a repair procedure in place, uh, mm -hmm. how to replace the windows. We petitioned the maker. How can we replace a window and give us the, give us the format how to replace it? Give us the windows. <laughs> yeah. Jerry, if you would... Um, Go back and remind everybody that September, our September, our regular September meeting will be the wrap up for the summer. Oh, well, the wrap up of this year. Budget. Oh, budget. The end of the year. Okay. School budget. The end of the year because they are on. Well, yeah, our budget ends yeah. on June 30th. Again, to right. our new people. Um, well, so you'd like to have them come in in September. They always do, but it's just a reminder that at that meeting, at the September meeting, if yeah. you would take that back with I you. I will. I certainly save will. Save me that traffic. I'm always willing to. Thank talk. you. That it'll be the, the, our meeting in September, which is always our regular meetings yeah, right, are always right. the third Tuesday. Right. That will be the, um, the meeting to summarize everything that went on in the wrap-up of this year and where we are going yeah. forward. I'm not looking to cut you shut, but I'm okay. um, I want to move on to Bob because he's chomping at the bit. 
<laughs> over there. <laughs> Chopping at the bit. <clears throat> well, we've just had our an annual meeting at the uh, Village District, and all the Warren articles were passed and the budget was approved, which will allow for additional activities this summer. The ones that are in place for May will be entertainment will occur every Saturday night during the month of May, weather permitting. We're also looking into some afternoon type activities involving younger children who are in groups that perform. And we've kind of improved our relationship with the music department at the high school. They will be back again this year on June 2nd to perform at the show. Last year it was very well received, so we hope that will become an annual tradition. An outgrowth of that relationship is a group called the Hampton Community Band. These are members, are former members of the high school music department band who have grown up and continue to have interest in music throughout their adult life. So, and they will be appearing for one hour concert on August 8th. Also, you may recall at our annual meeting, the bond article to fund the parking lot was approved. Yeah. And we are in the process of preparing to make that happen. Uh, there's a, 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 obviously, there's a fair amount of paperwork to be done to complete that process, but we hope to get it up and running sometime this summer you think you'll be able to get parking fees this summer? By you're gonna have to get rid of the building, right? Also. Yeah, it's basically getting rid of the building and then putting pay. in gravel. Once you're rid of the building, the prepar site preparation is not extensive. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking maybe you don't even have to asphalt it this year. Just put some. No, we can't asphalt. Yeah, 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 yeah. The conservation commission. Oh, not like really? It. Impervious. Yeah, we're we're very impervious. Well, we're. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're pervious. Pervious. <laughs> you want. Water to come through and sink into the ground. <laughs> That's why we're aware. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, in, in addition to that, uh, the Board of Selectmen has sent letters to all the public ways on the west side of Ashworth Avenue in the island section concerning parking issues. Oh, yeah. That meeting may or may not occur next Monday night. Last night at the Board of Selectmen, it was announced there would be a public hearing on that issue, and everybody mm -hmm. living in that area was supposed to have got notice of that to attend. Uh, did they? As far as I know, they did, but uh, Tim, did you get notice you live in the area? Yeah. So. I was there last night. So. No, that was North the North Beach. That was, North was last Beach. night. Yeah. South yeah. Beach is next week, theoretically. Yeah. I there, there may be a problem with next week. I'm not sure. Some one of the selectmen mentioned today that there may be something more pressing on their plate next week. I just don't know. Anyhow, that in conjunction with the development of the parking lot should help solve some of the parking issues in that part of the yeah, town. Yeah, that's wonderful. The development already going on or being proposed is tremendous down in that particular area. There's four major developments that are one is already started, the other three are very close to yeah. starting, which will uh, basically add over 100 units of a condominium or a hotel, a motel. Roughly, where are they? Ashworth Avenue and Ocean Boulevard. I mean, whereabouts on? Harris, the Harris Motel area is one of them. Mm -hmm. The one beside the gas station on Ocean Boulevard is starting to be developed now. There's a major one on Ashworth Avenue. And there's a proposal to take out almost whole, all one side of N Street and make it one large series of condominiums. That was when I heard that. Uh, yeah. N Town Street office. or M Street? N. N. So th there's a tremendous amount of development in play. We are also uh, have invited to our May meeting a representative from FEMA and a representative from the Zoning Board of Adjustment just to present to the general community information which should be of some interest to the people in the general community. Uh, we, we may be able to have someone representing the town at that meeting. We're not sure they're scheduled quite yet. So in general, we're, we're kind of simultaneously going up two streets, the entertainment street and the informational street, and hopefully it'll be to everyone's benefit. 
that's about it for now. Thank you. Bob. All right. I'm you mentioned going. the asphalt of the uh, parking lot in the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. um, I assume that you will agree with me that as a separate government body, you are not subject to zoning laws. You're not subject to Conservation Commission opinions. Uh, you can do what you will relative to those rules and laws. So if the Village District Commission has choose to asphalt it, I'm aware of nothing that can stop them from doing that. If they choose not to, then they choose not to. But let's not, let's not suggest that some other body has some authority when they don't. We are not insensitive to the issues that the Conservation Commission mm -hmm. is attempting to address. And we will attempt <coughs> to honor and respect that commission with its recommendation mm -hmm. and not merely act unilaterally yeah. and independently of it. I just want to point out it's a matter of choice for the commission. Yeah. is yeah. Okay. Not, not something that is uh, uh, statutorily required. It's not something required. that stopped you, right? No. Oh, okay. It I was, misunderstood it, too. I, I, I no. understood it. It was also brought up at the meeting. Yeah. And for the fact of trying to get this thing going this year, this was the simplest, easiest route to go, right. was to just put down gravel or stone. So we may, I have no objection. So, so we may see yeah, it another. That was, but that was part of the reason. Right. That's what I'm saying. That was part of the reason. I just wanted I'm, to point out. Gentlemen, be clear on that. Yep. I'm I, going I to go. Follow up on that. Gentlemen, I'm going to go to the process that if you want to. We, we talked about it last meeting to be acknowledged by the chair to speak if you would put your hands up so that we don't do the cross thing back and forth around the table because we still are 15 people. Yes, Tim. May I be recognized? You're it was easily, also, it was easily also, recognized. <laughs> thank you. It was also uh, omitted from your report that the VD's annual meeting, the Village District's annual meeting, mm -hmm. uh, raised their operating budget by... Uh, over 20 percent, right, Sid? I don't have the figures with me. Pretty accurate, though, right? I'll, I'll go I mean, ahead. there's 115,000 on a half a million dollar budget. It's about 20 percent. However, that was voted on and approved? No, no, I just so wanted to let the whole committee be aware yeah. that, uh, well, that the VD annual meeting chose to I, increase their budget by 20 percent. What is the VD? VD is Village term. District. Village District. Oh, okay. The initials for Village used. District. Oh, okay. That <coughs> increase in the budget will be significantly offset by the anticipated revenue of the new parking lot. I would think so. And within a short period of time, it'll Yeah, it'll I would wash. think so as well. But it was it was really a curious thing that there was a gentleman, uh, citizen in the audience, not myself, who was trying to increase the revenue line item and was uh, strongly encouraged, shall we say, perhaps even ignored in attempts to uh, increase the revenue to reflect the anticipated parking that, revenue. That so all that was changed was an increase in expense of 20 percent. There was no change in the revenue line item, even though there was attempt to make it so. I will say that the budget that was presented to us was recommended by us, was passed by the precinct, no. and is now in place. No, they increased the 20 percent, then they passed they, it. They increased it. Yeah. They increased it. Yeah. 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 Ah, I stand Added corrected. Okay. That's what I'm trying to point out. Well, the voters, the voters were able to do that. Who live it's in their the choice. precinct, That's and they choice. were able to vote, and appeared and voted, overwhelmingly supported the budget. That's their choice. That's and I would also mention the budget of the village district is only paid by the taxpayers of the village district, mm -hmm. not by the general community. So they made a choice, mm -hmm. and they voted in favor of what we do and support what we're <coughs> doing. So that's kind of where it's at. Uh, All right. Thank you. I have my full disclosure thank you. to realize. Thank you. Stephen? Just for clarification, the revenue portion of the budget is merely an estimate. And that will not be established until September. Per law with the DRA, <clears throat> the, the expenditure part of it, of the budget, was approved by the voters. That's the part that needs to be approved. The revenue part is only an estimate, the number that I put in there. That will be firmed up in September, which works out very well for the village district because 
the parking lot is pretty much at that point done yeah, for the yeah. summer. So we know what amount of revenue we're going to be generating. That will be, it'll be firmed up at that point. Okay. Oh, your yeah, next year's budget will. So just will, just for the record. Will, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right. I'd like to move on to the minutes of March 17th. Mm -hmm. Move to approve. Second. Well, let's see. Let me ask if there's any corrections first, because there is. Before you move to approve, I move to approve as written. <laughs> I have a correction on page one. I'll consider your amendment. Thank you. <laughs> okay, on page one, we have Alan Blair, but Alan, you go by Scott. Yes, I do. So I want to interject the Scott. Okay. In there, okay, if that's all right with you. Yes. So that Thank it doesn't you. look like we have a whole different person that that's worn in between that meeting and this one. So it's Alan Scott Blair. It's Alan yes, Scott it is. Blair. He just prefers to be addressed as Scott. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Huh? Right there. All right, page two. Let me ask this. Does anyone else have any corrections? Oh, I see. To any any of the pages? All right. I can have a motion to accept. I move to accept uh, the as corrected. minutes as amended. Second? I'll second. Thank you, George. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Favor? I'm sorry? Are we going to vote on that? All those oh, yeah. Favor. All those mm. in favor. <laughs> sorry. You know, Jerry? Yeah. Jerry? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor. I'm sorry. Opposed? Any? No, there's an abstention. There will be an abstention. <laughs> Alan, only because you were not um, you were not here at last meeting. Okay. I did, did listen to it. Uh, yes, you I, did. I, <laughs> that doesn't count, though. All right. If you're not here, we ought, you need to and automatically Washington. abstain. Okay. Exactly. It happens to all of us. All right, moving on now to both committee and subcommittee discussions. I want to start out with, I should have just put committee, I should have put committee in there too. There are two committees that typically we send representatives to, one being CIP committee and the other being the Recreation Council. I asked all of you in this last month to think about where you feel you're best suited as far as serving, should we need a subcommittee? And this is beginning to look like a year that we will. I think you skipped over old business. I did. Yep. I need stronger glasses. Actually, all right, I'll go backwards. Anything under old business just to get it out of here because everything is pretty much new business. Yeah, I think that some wanted to speak about the, uh, uh, the uh, presentation by our uh, selectman's rep. Uh, it was instructed that we should wait till old business to do so. Am I correct on that? Yeah, I did say I did move it down. Well, I don't know that it's old actually, business. Huh? It's not, that's old. not old business. It's new, new business. That's new business. This well, is tonight. Chair, someone that's wanted to I, talk about it, and she said we'll talk about it under old business. I, I'd so actually like to put it under new business, not old business. Right. It is new um, business. And the old business, <laughs> I have some stuff. We had a whole little punch list that we sent. It, it's. A mute point at the moment because we sent us a selectman off with little task list mm -hmm. uh, trying to go through the proper channels. Mm -hmm. The strongest one being that we have a warrant article that is reducing us in size by half of our at large members that says attrition but does not define the attrition. The question is whether. It the Warren article will stand legally as it is because it is in opposition to what is worded <coughs> in the RSAs. One minute, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to give you an update on where things are. I have written the town clerk, and that was done immediately after the meeting. Um, we had sent Mary Louise to go through the channels, as you remember to the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager to access legal counsel. I have gotten nothing back on that. 
but I will tell you I have not been idle. I have gotten some legal counsel in Concord that we are not paying for that has given us, um, is in the process of giving us um, some directive on how we can best do this. And we will, after receiving that, I've given, every, let's put it this way, bottom line, I gave everybody the opportunity to help us out with this in the legal channels because as you know, we took the legal money we had in our budget and took it out because mm -hmm. we were told that we could access legal and if legal was in conflict with the selectmen on an issue, then we would be provided with outside funds. But we choose always to set the example and go in every direction we can to do it without spending money, and that's what I'm in the process doing. I am more than halfway there, but it is not complete. I expect that it will be complete by our next meeting, and if time allows, I'll review it then. It's not in a crisis mode. It doesn't take effect till next year. And I want to make sure that it's concise, that it's legal, and that in the very end, it is sanctioned by the um, Attorney General of the state. Okay? And that is where we are with it. So um, if you have a, a specific question on it or where it is or what it is, and if you want to ask me now, um, but that's where it is. I've left it out there, gone through every every route. I have gotten nothing back, received nothing. And I think that'll lead into what we'll talk about under new business. But that's part of the old business that I sent out there. Yeah, is it, it on seem, this? It will seem to me obviously in the next town election, next March, there should be a warrant article laying out the problems and offering a solution. It, well, some things because seem... Because the community isn't aware of... Sonny, it was an eye-opener for me. While there can be a warrant article to do a lot of things, there is a warrant article to deal with. And a lot of ways, a lot of people thought it could be dealt with, myself included, did not end up being the case. So until I have it back in writing, all right, I don't, I, I feel anything said at this point in time might still leave everybody out there and just make more questions than a solid answer. And what I want to give you, what the, what the goal was, to have a solid answer, this is what the vote is passed, this is what we have to do, how do we do it, or was the Warren article not illegal as it stood, as it was written, because of the caveat just coming in and saying um, that it would be through attrition and not defining what the attrition, how the, the how it would be laid out, all right? So that ended up being the biggest question. If you have attrition, how do you do it? And how everybody thought we'd do it isn't how it will end up being done. So there we are. Tim, you have a question on this one? Thank you. Um, it's my understanding that the Warren Article number one, which is the ballot of candidates, is drawn up. Uh, it's the responsibility to be drawn up by the town clerk. And I understood that you sent her some communication requesting how she might go about putting the reduction of the Budget Committee's warrant article in effect. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. okay. I, have, I have a correspondence to that effect. I think the problem is nobody has come up against this. And in fairness, a lot of people did not know how to deal with it. It had to go to a legal mind. So she hasn't responded yet. I do not have a response. Okay, and and so I wanted to I wanted to emphasize that it is it is not the budget committee's job. Uh, I think it's outside of our purview actually to go about uh, finding out how we put that warrant article into effect. Certainly, we have an interest as we have an interest in every warrant article to make sure that however it's being put into effect is being put into effect uh, to comport with the laws. So I think that's an excellent thing that you've managed to secure an attorney of Concord without charge. It's really excellent, excellent news. But I do want to emphasize that it's not the Budget Committee's function to decide how it, uh, any Warren article should be implemented. We could have a recommendation. In this case, in this case, it's the town clerks. And uh, I really hope that we continue to encourage the town clerk to um, 
discern how it is to be put into effect and then communicate that to us and the rest of the town uh, because you know we all have an interest in that so yes uh, and my feeling Tim is I hope that still be communication since, going on since no one has one communicated or two appear to have an answer I've mm -hmm. gotten a lot of well I'm not sure and I don't know then my response to that is to get a legal mind in this state that does know and can give it to us in writing because this is changing an elected yeah. body. We are I, not I, I, I'm encouraging what you're yeah. doing. I'm just I just okay. don't want to take it so far that we you know, step outside of our, our bounds. I, and, I and I'm a little concerned that that might happen <coughs> if we come up with an illegal opinion that says this is how you effectuate it. Uh, because it's not our job to uh, to do that. Uh, it's the town clerks, and I want I want people. And it's most important in government, especially. The people have statutory requirements in their job, and they, they need they need the opportunity. And we need to have the public needs to have an expectation that those people that are statutorily assigned to certain tasks do those tasks, and we are not assigned to that task. However, being aware of what you know the legal implications are is a very valuable thing to have, as it would be for any warrant article. So I'm, I'm very happy to hear about about this news about the attorney. Thank you. I just want to be sure we don't overstep our bounds with it. Okay, thank you. All right. I so, have some old business. I okay. You know, last month, middle of last month, when we met, you asked everybody to get you their recommendations on how the budget process could be improved mm -hmm. that we experienced here frustratingly or painfully over three or four months. I certainly uh, emailed you uh, four items that I thought would improve the budget process and I would hope that the others emailed you as well. But did these get to the selectmen at all? They have not gotten to the selectmen. I do have what you sent me. Okay, and there is a reason. As I lined up this meeting for good news, I have lined up our next meeting and procured that two hour seminar from an HMA mm -hmm. on the budget. That has been scheduled, it has been approved. I ran it by a town manager. All right, I'm not hoping that we don't have a circumstance like tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm Great. I'm telling you, I, this is totally unexpected. But the idea was we'd start out tonight with the good news on the growth of town mm -hmm. and money to the rolls, that we would have our next meeting be educational. All of the department heads will be invited to join us for that meeting. It will be, um, for those who have gone to the seminar, it will be a PowerPoint, much like Nathan Lunny comes through here and, you know, and speed motion and it will pretty much cover what is covered on the eight hour seminar when you go up um, oh, to Manchester only it'll be a two hour um, seminar instead brought to us then I thought in our June meeting after having listened to what is our charge what we d do do as a budget committee by the statutes that then we can organize ourselves going forward on how we want to go with the rest of the year and that's why I didn't do that yet. Yeah, the thing um, that bothers me is that they're going to be budget. They're going to start budgeting in June, July already. Mm -hmm. And if they repeat what's happened over here over the last years, it's going to be another fool's errand. Well, if that's they're gonna what happens, they're going to come in here with backup <laughs> data that's insufficient or inadequate. They're going to come in here with line items that they're not able to justify. Well, then I we'll mean, have it's to do be right our there, job, black Jerry. and white, all over again. We'll have to do the job that we. We have, have to in get front to them. Us. We have to tell them what our preference is in terms of how they should present them to us. So they are forewarned, mm -hmm. okay? Because you know, I'm not giving up on this. If that line item comes in and they've spent eighteen thousand a year for the last three years, and they come in asking for thirty-five. Already the hairs are up on the back of my neck. I think we all have to digest what the voters said in this election because you know what? It's not just in this election. It has been in every election right. since SB2 came in. Cot Blanche across the board, no matter what board was in there serving us, no matter what visions, horizons, or what we had on our plate, the overwhelming thing 
that carried the budget was how much it was and if it, if it, if it stayed the course. The year, we, you know, I, I've heard people say, well, you haven't passed budget in years. Well, that's not true. <coughs> that's not true. All right, that is not true. We have okay, passed. we have passed the budget. Well, I've been chairman. We've passed two budgets, and we passed those budgets. And there were other, there were another year or two. But every time, it comes down to them wanting to spend what you say is necessity. It seems that people want the choice to vote for all the other stuff. And and stuff is a bad word, but all the other stuff they want to be able to vote for that and more in articles. You know talking to a few people, we spent, or we will spend, close to three quarters of a million dollars on two dams by the time we're done. It's not that people won't vote for things that they feel passionate about. They just, think, from what I see after 15 years, is they want us to stay the course on the budget and then they want to look at the other things. There were some people that said they'll never vote for the thing on to repave Exeter Road, knowing that five years down the road we may tear it up, but they did, and it was the logical, and I think it was the right thing to do, and that's what we have to trust in, and and that's why I'm not going to lay goals out in this meeting. I didn't want to do that, but just in a reflection backwards, that's to me what they said: keep the budget stable, put the other things on the war article, and give them the choice. When the budget, uh, when the when the voting took place mm -hmm. in March, I didn't hear any s substantive discussion at the board of selectmen about the budget, what passed, what didn't pass, any discussion on critiquing themselves or some things, some articles that went through well, like the Grist Mill. They some they were all in favor of it, that went through, you know, by eight votes or whatever, it did go through. Six. I didn't hear the analysis. I didn't hear the introspective care. That's what bothers all, me the you most. You know, all I can say, Jerry, to that is that we have our job. We can't tell them how to do their <laughs> job, but they choose to do. They choose to do. It's creating a situation for us that needs some remedy. Hopefully, by the next meeting, we'll have something more to work on. Yes, say we were going to have Fred and or uh, the finance director in as well to go over some of these things. Well, we always do. We, not necessarily before, now. Before they go and do their yeah. budgets no, and come to us with them. We can do that. If, if you'd like to put the, and we can put that in the June agenda. Because, I mean, this stuff coming in here with backup data that's absolutely devoid or insufficient right. or inadequate cannot work. I know. And we wanted the default column. Mike, Mike met, mentioned. We are, going, we are going to have that. That was one of the things under old business. We had asked Mary Louise to have them put. And I went in and I, I spoke um, to Christy and asked her. And she is going to put the default column back in the budget. It's going to shorten the line a little bit. It had a space issue. They added a column, yeah. so they took that one out. That was what I was given as I said, well, I don't care what you got to get rid of to get rid of it, but the default should um, be right line next to what you're going, proposing. That is right. going because to be we have to go from right. from the budget over to the default budget, right. and and marry them together. And as the meeting went on, sometimes we lost. So we that conversation has been had, and the change is being made. I'm going to go to Tim, and then I'm going to go to Bob. Tim. Well, I was happy to yield to Jerry. And I'll be happy to yield to Bob as well, as long as I'm recognized eventually. Well, I just recognized you, so let's not <laughs> do it. Get it out. Um, <clears throat> well, I had a, a few things, in, and uh, and uh, I seem to keep losing the floor. Uh, but uh, the I wanted to confirm for sure, um, most importantly to me, because we've been I've been asking for this for a long time, as most people know, the NHMA seminar, which is entitled to us is free of charge. We've been asking the last year's Board of Selectmen through our representative and been getting uh, no response at all. And uh, from what I heard you say just now, uh, a while ago, that uh, you have confirmed uh, with uh, the, the Executive Director, Judy, you just confirmed that she will be here in, in May and give a presentation on, will be here. on uh, all about the budget, basically. I am happy to send you all the confirmation on that. Um, mm. They'll be sending me a PowerPoint <laughs> shortly. I was waiting for that, to send that all out to you at the same time. So it will be a PowerPoint presentation. 
Um, I want you to have it ahead of time only because it will serve us best to put any questions in writing mm -hmm. and not have an open discussion. It is eight hours worth of subject matter in two hours. If we do this, it'll be of no value. Oh, yeah, you can. All right. So let them make their presentation. Exactly. <laughs> let them make their presentation. They will. At, they will. You've been to the. You know how they work. That for those who have been to the one in Manchester, right. they they take the card. They have you write a couple of cards. Don't come in prepared for five thousand questions. Just the really important ones, and they do answer them. They take the cards and they do answer them. I'm more um, concerned about getting two hours of solid content out yep. here. That's we get a free lunch. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have it in a budget. No lunch. Um, I, I agree that uh, the two hours solid of uh, educational material yeah. uh, is extremely valuable for us. Mm -hmm. And assuming that uh, the forces that be allow us to be on video, unlike, uh, unlike exactly. the past, then the entire town will be able to en enjoy nice. that education. And uh, in fact, Rewatch it over and over again to their satisfaction. That will be a in terms of these very important points. That will be a request that we'll have that it runs entirely through budget season. I mean, it may not be on as much of a rotation as some of the other things, but that at least once or twice a week, it be up there in a rotation. Because uh, you know, in having in having all of us, not just the budget committee, but the entire uh, collection of voters, which we are a committee of the voters, effectively. Having all the voters have a common understanding of what the budget process is uh, should serve well in eliminating unnecessary um, frictions about discussions on certain points of the budget. Uh, we have that, have had that in the budget committee itself. It also takes place out in the voting public in general, and I see a lot of it both here and in general is unnecessary if we had a common education on it. So this is very important that it be video, good, uh, and it's very important that these people who are, they have an enormous resource resource in terms of understanding these things. Very important they be allowed to do their thing pretty much uninterrupted, and if we have questions, let's really make them well phrased, and, and you know well pointed and, and short and sweet, uh, because it's, we have to remember it's an educational opportunity for everyone, not just for that one evening, but going forward. We're going to get a handout of the PowerPoint. Yes, I'm going to get it. I'm going to send it to you and email when I get it. So that when she's presenting or he, we can follow it along and write our questions in there. Yeah, maybe. we'll be doing a PowerPoint. Yeah. So since we have confirmation from the executive director of the NHMA, mm -hmm. I, I, I can assume that uh, unless some powerful force who is like you know absolutely convinced that we need to live in a continuous state of ignorance on these matters, it's going to happen. So I'm very happy about that, and there are other points I'm going to make, but I don't want to step on that very important message, so I'll just you shut up. You've used up all your time. <laughs> yeah, your time, time, of that was your time is sweet. up. <laughs> you, you, you Wait a minute. Taking a two-minute conversation at the hotel. I love the way you take a shot meeting and we end up making it six hours long. Bob? I had a single observation of last year that no one could pin anyone down as to what would be lost if the budget wasn't approved. It was always kind of, it's a bottom line budget. I don't know what we'll cut out. I really think an informed electorate knowing if you vote for this amount of money, you get this. If you vote for that amount of money, you get mm -hmm. that. Makes that a far more effective vote. I just don't accept that hiding behind it's a bottom line budget. Yeah, we hate that term bottom line budget. We hate the term default budget. We're really here to make a budget and throwing that out, the other thing, in a reflection on last year. And I, I'm just going to throw it out there for you guys to think about for the June meeting, okay? This past year, we upset a few people because as we went along with the budget, we approved the departments as they were. But it became apparent that it was like nickel and diming us to death, and we kept looking for, you know, the elephant in the room that you could say, okay, take that $600,000 thing and put it in a Warren article, and there just wasn't. And when we got to the end, we were looking at, a, or midway through, we were looking at a budget that had an extra $2 million in it, but it was all over the place. Oh, yeah. So we changed course on it 
but it confused people, I think, because we were approving in parts and pieces as we were going through. I'm not going to open it for discussion tonight. I'm going to throw it out there just for you to think about. The process that we used is one that we've used all along. I'm suggesting that you think about possibly we change that process this year to not finalizing and voting any number until we get to the review. That leaves everything open and everything on the table <clears throat> as we go through and we just take the presentations and what we do is is when we get to just just a thought is this going to be a yeah I had a, I had a conversation with a uh, couple of department heads uh, yeah. at the deliberative session and uh, they had pointed out that uh, reading our minutes you know when, when it says move to uh, send it to the deliberative session or something to that effect when in fact every motion we make on these individual line items always just move it not not anything specific and I understood it to be you know move it for consideration or something to that effect when it was pointed out to me that it's in our minutes that's move to go to deliberative session with it all right and these department heads were expressing an exacerbation that they had an expectation because of our minutes mm -hmm. I think what we need to do basically is change that uh, yeah. that particular point so that it's more clear that it is not a final decision. Maybe we should phrase it that, you know, move for favorable consideration at the final this review is, or something like that. This is the part of us that going back and critiquing ourselves on what could have been misunderstood, taking a process that has always been something that maybe needs to be fixed would still be correct, okay, and just doing it in a different way. What we always did have was the right to change it, mm -hmm. all right, when we got to the end, no matter what it was, which is, that's the end. When you get to the end to final review, that's the final, that's the final number, that's the final. I um, think there's probably a lot of misunderstanding on the budget head's part, and the, um, primarily due to the fact that we've had a complete turnover in the last year in our three departments. The heads. Well, not only that, and they just were not that familiar with the usual process. Yeah, of the budget process is six months long. Right. When you start here, something's going to change by the time you get here, and on top of that, you have all the Warren articles. There have been years where we have had something in the budget, and we have passed it through, and then we had somebody turn around, a town manager, whoever was selectman at that point in time, and an up. There's been more than one example, but I, and I can't give it to you right off the top of my head, where by the time we got to the end, they said, no, we want to try to lower the budget itself. We want to put this in a Warren article instead. So changes are made. That is why there is a final review. That is why there is a public hearing. So if you put into your head from the beginning, this is a moving target from beginning to end. Last year, we kept asking on rates on fuel rates and that oh, yeah. and it wasn't until we gave a number and no. said you know what this is the number we're going to give you to live no. oh but this is what it was well where was that number because we were asking for it at every single uh, that's meeting the, when the fat hit the fire well <laughs> then yeah, you, well, heard, you, know, the, it you did, heard the spitting and the oh we boy. can bash last year i i think a little of self-analysis going forward into this year looking at things that we could have done maybe a little bit better trying to it's get excuse me trying to get department heads and selectmen to work with us because the bottom line is this is the budget that's going to go before the taxpayers and they're going to vote on it. And then we got to listen to what they want. It's not necessarily what we want or what the selectmen want. It's what they're going to give us. Tim, then Mike. <laughs> then, <laughs> come on. Mike, can Mike go next? Yeah, give Mike a shot over You're there. You're not going at all. You've already. Go ahead, Mike. Ooh, it was suggested to me by a fellow budget committee member that we suggest to the department heads there be a limit to their increase in their budget before we even start you as know, a guideline. You know what? And I think that might be food for thought. We've never done that before. We, we haven't done that, and, and this is why I've never asked for it, and I've always been against us. I've sat in, those, in 15 years, I've been there and I've been here, and I've never asked for it from either side. We need to know what they need. We pay these department heads a lot of money. And in between us and them is also a town manager and a board of selectmen. All right? 
But we need, there have been times in recent history that they needed things that they didn't come to us for. And we found out maybe after the fact. You have to leave a process open to some extent and unrestricted. They know what boundaries are. If we sit there saying, look, we want to, we want to see a level budget, that sends the message. We don't have to pick apart each department. But I think we have to leave it open for them that if we have a department that it comes in here, and we've had years ago, we would have a, a, a um a police chief or a fire chief that comes in and says, hey, I'm down to nothing. I need this. I know that I need to be here, but I can't do it with that anymore. We have to leave that, and by, by picking numbers that we want to see them come in at, I think that, that throws a restriction. the overall restriction. budget as a guideline? Well, the overall budget, I mean, it, we'll discuss, think about the goals, and we'll discuss that openly, I think, in the June meeting, I think is a good place for it. We can't do it in the next meeting. It's too late to do it in this meeting. I think the June meeting is a good place. Yeah. Sonny? Well, if you think it back through the process, the Board of Selectmen make a recommendation. They come before us. We voted on the same. Most of those I, departments, there was very little money cut. We approved it. What happened at the end, when we decided to cut the budget, that created the furor. You know, if you want to cut the budget, you have to do it during the process. Okay, appreciate that. Yeah, I, I like to add two cents here. You know, there's, there's variables. <clears throat> For instance, during the budgeting process, we recommended that they buy these items out of the uh, 014 surplus. And they did. They bought garage doors from the DPW. They bought the hydraulic lift from the DP, for the DPW. In December expenditures, yet they're in the 015 budget. So they double dipped. So, what I, so I don't know that you, I, when these departments are coming through and we're reviewing them and analyzing them, we can give them a preliminary acceptance or a preliminary rejection based off of whatever we find. But we're going to have to know what's spent in November and December so that we can mitigate mm -hmm. the 016 budget when it gets, or, or 016, 017 budget when it gets presented. And, uh, and, and the other one is taxes. I mean, these, these are, or, or health insurances, municipal insurances, oh, yeah. where they, they give the town a certain bogey or benchmark from a percentage, and then it changes drastically in December or January. Downward in this case. Yeah. By 160,000 or whatever it was. Oh, so that. I don't know you can get anybody hard yeah. figures as they come through. That was half a, almost half a million. Yeah, was it yeah. that much? Yeah. So, so, so I, I feel that we do our analysis mm -hmm. by department as they present themselves and tell them preliminarily how we feel about it. And, but we don't make any final decisions until we know what's was spent in November and December so that we can mitigate the projected budget for the coming year, and we know what the insurances are. Mm -hmm. So, because those are the variables, and the, you know, of course the gas and diesel this year was a variable. We watched that go down and from it's still 350 down. down to a dollar 90 or thereabouts, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, so we, we, that was a big variable. Where I looked at the budgets uh, through March, and and gas is and diesel are down, even though we had those winter storms. Yeah. Gas and diesel is down. Uh, well, the, the bogey is 25 percent for the whole budget. They're down to 21 for gas and diesel. They're uh, 60,000 they've spent so far. And if you annualize that, it's Jerry, I don't want to go on to that. And yeah. I'm going to actually let Scott have something okay. to say, and then I'll. Could I? Back. Yeah, I want to have something okay. to say about Just this. Just a, a quick question: In the May meeting, is this process going to be covered? I'm. I'm yes, I'm exactly. So, we, do we need to talk about it now? No. Agreed. Yes, no, we, we don't. We're, we're burning daylight, <laughs> yeah. guys. I, I know we're burning daylight. <laughs> got to <the> problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Well, Why there's we, a lot of frust there's a lot of well, energy and frustration that was yeah, built up. I can see that over the I, last four, five, six months. Okay, it's going to take a while to discharge. Okay. Basically, some of the discussion is out there because we will have a meeting in June to go over these things, and there were some things that were highly criti criticized um, that make a better burger. So here's the thought on how to do it, 
and not take action on it tonight, but think about it. And it's important because those of us who sat here saw it in different ways, man to man. And our objective this year is to try to make what was done last year even better. Right. All right. Stephen. I was quite excited that Ed Tinka was going to be here yeah, tonight. I was looking forward to it. I had been told that he had information for us that would um, that would leave huge tax increase because of properties that have come online. And the question that I was going to put to him tonight was what projects are going to be coming online this year and next year? Because it seemed to it occurred to me that here's the man that has the key. He has the information that I need. Mm -hmm. Because if I know that there are uh, multi-million dollar buildings coming online this year and there are also multi-million dollar and we have actual figures of next year as well, then it would give me as a business person, and of course this town should be run as a business, it would give me the opportunity to say, okay, I know that I'm going to be able to make a plan for next year and the year after and perhaps as a former department head um, in a corporation, um, I always knew up, I knew that when I had to prepare my budget for the next year, and I didn't have a crystal ball, but I had information to work with. Now, the, I also had orders from corporate, corporate headquarters that would say to me, um, we want to see a 5% increase in revenue and we want to see a 3% decrease in expense. And, you know, and I know that you don't want to put a number to this, but um, the person that Mike was referring to is me. And my thought, and I actually talked to a department head in town about this just last week. I said, what if, what if the budget committee, the legislative body that is elected to create the budget for this town, stated, okay, department heads, before you even start your budget process for this year, go into it knowing that the budget committee would be very pleased with a perhaps 3.5% increase over what you're working with this year and see if you can make that work now in a department that says well I need a new fire truck do what you said put it on as a warrant article but the budget itself would they'd have a target they would know what they're targeting at to just say what do you need it I don't I couldn't, I couldn't do business like that, and I did business for 30 years, and I was a department head. I did the very thing that we're talking about, creating budgets and making it work, and that's my two cents. Thank okay. you. All considerations. Um, the one thing, the bottom line, although we run like a business, we are not a business, and that is sometimes where a municipal budget problem lies is that we cannot always treat it like a business because we have necessities as a community. So I like to leave the discussion open. But this has been lively. It gives you something to think about. Um, and something, should you want a motion in the June meeting to set up, I think after your two-hour <coughs> seminar, you'll have a handle on what your job is. And we'll talk about this again in June. All right, good discussion. Mm -hmm. All right, I am going to move on to new business and to the committees because I do want to get this done. No, no, no more discussion. You did your intro on the, on the subcommittee earlier. Yes. And yeah, just, let the chair count. Yeah, me. and you know, Please. I want well, to get through the this Well, let the chair meeting. do the yeah, chair. You occupy the majority it. of this meeting. Yeah, I am. Please. There he goes. Why don't you hold hands with Phil as you leave? Michelle. Okay. I mean... Okay, yeah, moving on. Move That's on. it. All right. Subcommittees and committees. Going back. CIP committee. I need a representative and I need an alternate. I would like to still be the representative. Yeah, and I'd like to remain the alternate. 
So. Okay. That's fine. So Sonny, will you st you'll still be here next year? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he just got three years. Yeah. Got All right. Years. I've so, been teaching him well. Okay, so the two of, the two of you. Um, so the other thing I want to work with is the. Okay. <laughs> you know what? As an alternate on that committee, I always went. There were years I was the rep. The years I was an alternate. As an alternate, I went. I shut my mouth, and I didn't vote. Um, but it got a lot of information that was very helpful. So wow. uh, usually it's one or the other. With Tracy is the chair, there's very little to talk about. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> no, I've sat, there, I've sat there with Tracy. Um, but just, it's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good experience. And I say that because next year you'll still be here and, and, and that will, will carry on. All right, that one's done. Now I have Recreation Committee. And interest in the recreation and um, an alternate. I'm interested in the Recreation Advisory Council. Thank you, Nick. And I want an alternate when Nick can't go. In fairness to Diana, we gave her no representation last year. Well, this is makeup. Well, I, I do quite a bit of recreating now. <laughs> I, I, I really don't think Nick is going to miss any meetings, but Bob, you'd be a good one. Glenn, you want to be a back? Let's go to every meeting. You got All right, Glenn has his Anna. <laughs> All right. All right, subcommittee for administration. I'm going to lump that all together. What does that mean? <laughs> Could you explain that? Administration, what is that? Okay, administration um, <laughs> is all the departments within town hall. You want to we look at it that way? We have, we break, <laughs> we break it up. Which one? The one that over there, yeah, over here? You know, I, I, I hate to say this, gentlemen, but this has already been a difficult evening. Oh, it certainly you know, has. Yeah. It's already been a difficult evening. You take, as far as I'm concerned, you either take this seat seriously. Okay. Well, I mean, and help it, me yeah. out and help me out here. That was okay. a bad, bad showing. Well, All right, okay. Let's just. I'm not on. going there right now. All what, right. What does the uh, what is needed for that that position? I, I don't understand what administrative subcommittee. Would okay. Be. In the past, and I'm going to give it a little bit of color because we've gone back and forth with subcommittees, mm -hmm. there are years that we work a little bit closer with the departments in a subcommittee. We did it with the schools when we thought we didn't really have a handle on having the schools come in in one night wrapping our arms around their budget. Mm -hmm. So we formed a subcommittee of three people, and that committee met with the schools numerous times mm -hmm. and then just reported back to the committee yeah. so that we didn't labor here through all the details they kind of just gave us an overview and when it came time to have the schools come in we pretty much had a handle on it I think that it may not be as cooperative year I'm feeling it may not be as much of a cooperative year that perhaps we need to get a handle more on the departments DPW was one. It's in transition. It has a new head. There's a lot going on. They're short on manpower. Um, they may have a lot of things that they're going to ask for us, ask us for that. Typically, we may not be looking at the dollars and cents. We may not be doing, but we should be doing. So, DPW is one. But administratively, it's everything that's wrapped within this building. It's it's assessing. It's accounting. It's town manager it's everything here clerk's office so that's why I'm lumping it all together there aren't a lot of issues that you really have to dig yourself into might mean who's ever on administrative really plays pays close attention to the insurances and things like that things we might need then you've got your big three you've got fire police and DPW and then you have the schools I don't think we need a subcommittee on the schools. I don't think so. All right. No, and that's because we had a number of years that we did. We went, what, three, four years, and then we formed a new SAU, a new school department. And a lot of intensive work went in there, and they're still going by the model of that budget. So of not as intense. So that's where I'm looking at. I'm looking at four areas. Well, I, look I'd like to volunteer for DPW. DPW? Okay. I'd like to have Mike join in. Yeah. We need to get out of that one, right? <laughs> what we need to do is we really need to take a hard look at their so-called 
Rolling stock. Rolling stock, yeah. And, no. and also, I need to get a good firm regrip on that wastewater plant as well. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm working with wastewater plant now, so. So you want to sit oh, on that solar, one? Are you working for the solar with the solar business? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, well, so good. we got TPW covered. All right. Um, I only have a year, so, I mean, it, well, does it make sense to go to admin or, you know, I mean, and eat, I don't know, the admin is easier than... You are course. a member of this committee. Yes. Okay, yeah. who was elected. Yes, for a year, though. And so self it's, it's for a year, and <laughs> next year there will be no election. I have care. Um, but there is life after that, mm -hmm. and you yeah. may decide you really like it here and you want to come back. Yeah. So we don't want to leave you out, Scott. No, no, that's okay. okay? So I, but I'm just thinking maybe if you had somebody that had another two years or three years, you know, that, that might be one of the well, larger the, departments. This, this is the problem with the Warren article as it was passed, is that most of us will be gone. Okay. But, but you always learn something. Sure. But yeah. what we gather... The school thing, that was, oh, wow. Yeah. That was brutal. And we learned a lot. Mm -hmm. we did learn and we had some good experiences, too. Yes, we did. <laughs> um, but one of the biggest things is that what you'd learn even as a novice, you bring back you mm -hmm. to the table, mm -hmm. and people do pay attention to what yeah. goes on at this table. Yeah, no, no, I, I, but sure. find a comfort zone, you know, and I, know huh? I would volunteer for admin. If you for admin, I, I think that's a good place because you know you didn't. I I got a picture of Scott's. I keep going to Alan. I'm sorry. I got a, a big picture of Scott's background, and he can be very instrumental. Um, but there's a lot of departments here, and you know, like you know, got taxing, you got assessing. Yeah, but I don't know, Jerry, that we spend that much time with a lot of issues here. We don't. All right, so that might be a good but, place. I mean, there ought to be some way we can help shape his sense of direction, so to speak. We will. You know what I mean? We will. I mean, I think your comment about the finance director is a good one. But he's not going to be alone, so who else wants to be? I would like to nominate uh, Jim. Jim O'Laughlin no, no, to, we'll to, that, to that committee yeah. as well, only because only because of all his experience in government. Right. Okay. He has like 12 years as a selectman um, right. in working in government down in Massachusetts. So I think that he would be a, a natural for that particular seat. And I don't, I don't, I'm just nominating him. Yeah. You I, may not accept it. But right. but first off, my, of my hair is falling out. <laughs> I don't know who's going. Are we doing all this for admin, or no. are we going to have we the did three people? DPW. Let's, let's, wait DPW. A minute. We're not restricted on any number on these committees. If any of you feel you want to work on another okay, one, that's fine. we don't know. This, bear in mind, we don't know if we're going to have to get into depth. We may get everything we need. All right? This is only if we don't or if. There's just not enough time here, which happens. Yeah. We just, that was the case with the schools. Just wasn't enough time here. You had to spend a little bit. DPW is one of those. In the one night that they come in and present to us, there's not enough time to understand that. Right. Whole no, no, I'm not arguing that. I'm okay. just saying, I'm, okay. notes wise, I'm just right. trying to notes keep, who's wise, going where. DPW, we have Mike, Jerry, and Sonny. Yep, that's, all I have we've, that. that's all we've solidified. Okay. On the admin side, we will ask Jim, okay? And Scott, Scott or Alan or whichever one it is. Scott, <laughs> okay. Yep. I would like a volunteer from among those of you who have been selectmen to just put your name in there because you know the inner workings of town hall. Mr. Pierce. Oh, I don't think so. After tonight, I don't think I'm going to be in a good mood for that. Don't put me over there. <laughs> I'll sure. bring my machine gun with I'll me or whatever I need. Michael? To level the I'll back you up. Good news is you I know you got DPW. That's true. <laughs> but like I said, there may be very little to do on this one. Well, I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 would agree, having, I would agree. Well, I'm having trouble with it. Because, I heard, I heard, Mike. Yeah. Okay. I mean, All right. That's just now police and fire. I'm going to put those two together. So police and and quite honestly, <laughs> police and fire through the years have given us the least together? amount to get into. You're coming together. I'm going to put them two together. Okay, I'll volunteer for that one. As will I. Okay, good choices. One more. Who isn't on anything? Bob. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll be more than happy Steven? to jump in there. Steven is not the other one? On He's not on anything. He's not on anything. He's not on anything. He's not on anything. Steven hasn't got it. Come on, Steve. Get, get, get in on. the get water. Get the fire truck. I'll do it. Get my fire truck. I'll do it. Get my bumper. 
I'll do it. Give him a bumper. Fire, so it's it's Nick, a myself, and who? It's the third person. Mike. 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 Very good. Very I good. thought you would forget it already, but you didn't. <laughs> All right. Okay, now, fine. this is the other thing. In recent years, we have always made it a point not to send 15 people out asking a gazillion questions. So even though we have now formed subcommittees, okay, I would like to keep going with that respect. We pay these department heads a lot of money, and to pop in on them no, 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 isn't fair. Happen. You have to make an appointment. So while yeah, there is right. a subcommittee, it will still be decided in committee when we'll use the subcommittees and when you'll go out and what information you'll be going for. So, you know, nobody going rogue. Okay. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. All right. So we don't have to go back over that. So now we've got everything covered. We're not Let me ask you a question. If I wanted to, say, talk to uh, the new deputy. Jacobs. Chris, Chris Jacobs. Jacobs. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, what are you saying? We He's can't to make an appointment. He's a new public works director. Come from if, this committee. if you want to speak to Chris Jacobs, yes. okay, which you will, Yes. what we're going to do is we're actually going to set up um, a meeting. Meeting. And Please. for those of you who go, you're going to have to come back with some sort of contrite minutes and a report back to us. But it's just yes. not going to be freewheeling, here I am. I'm on the budget committee, and this is what I want from oh, you. But, well, yeah, but I, I would set up the appointment, though. No. Well, whoever set up no, the No, all the appointments will go through the chair. Okay. No, really? And okay. we had we way. had good experience, you and I, corresponding things last year. There's no reason they like it that way. That's that it okay. comes from one place, and yeah. I see. All right. Yeah. Just a little bit of order and respect for them and their time. Madam, Madam Chair, yep. um, I think you had mentioned to me at, that we were going to um, continue on with the rules subcommittee as well. We are. Okay. Is that I'm going to get into next that the, next. Okay. Okay. Next, I'm going to move down to the 2015-16 calendar. As you know, one year for us isn't over until the election next year. Um, the calendar is done. Forgive me. I didn't bring it tonight. I will send it to you guys all in an email. Mm -hmm. The whole year is done mm -hmm. up until election next year. Mm -hmm. Very so good. no excuses. You and, and I have skirted, as I always do, all of the holidays. If you cannot wait until tomorrow to get it, which is always a possibility, it is already or should already be on the website. I've already blocked. I had the dates blocked out. And that being said, I'm going to move quickly into the summer before um, <clears throat> I left the dates for the summer meetings because I think we're going to need them this year. And I realize people have vacations. I do not expect that everybody will be here for the July and August dates. But I do think that will be a good time to go over um, the I don't want to call them rules, but we're trying to put together some sort of guidelines for those who come after us. Mm -hmm. And in the summer months, I think it's a good time to just update and maybe do that and concentrate on those two meetings to do that. Do you want to create a committee? Yes, I do. I would like to volunteer only because I was on that committee last year and spent some time yes. developing some rules. and. I want to incorporate, uh, Jerry, you were on that committee with me last year mm -hmm. as well, and so was Tim Jones. Perhaps the same people would like to do it again. Well, we'll have to ask him. We'll have to ask him, of course. I would like to incorporate David Wood's idea um, and his suggestion about the way that the, uh, the house up at the uh, New Hampshire um, house uses the Mason rules. I looked that up on the, uh, I googled Mason rules, and I think we need to incorporate that into this committee. I do. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so is anybody else interested on that committee? Nick? Sure. I'd be more than happy to Okay, so I Nick think it's important for those of you who are going to be here long term to be on that because you'll know where they came from. I understand. All right. There doesn't have to be a limit on this, and to tell you the truth, we can all be and leave those meetings open. We'll just find a, a place to meet and have it. Okay. And we'll produce minutes that will become part of the, the record mm -hmm. on those meetings. So All right. it'll be Nick and Jerry and myself. Well, it's going to be Nick, Jerry. He's not here. 
Yeah, so we know for a fact, Nick, yes. myself, and Jerry for now. And I would like to ask Dave Woods, because as a state representative, I think I'd like him can to be on that It's not well. close to anybody, mm -hmm. and ask Tim, because, of course, nobody reads the RSAs better than Tim. Yes, the more the merrier. And you will see me on that committee as well. Is he a member? All right. But, again, I think that is one committee okay. will leave open Where to participation. Okay. All Thank right. you. Mm -hmm. He's not a member of the budget committee. What? Dave Wood, he's not here. Yes, yeah, Dave Wood is a member of the budget committee. He's just, just not here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You want Dave on that oh, committee? I didn't know he yeah. got reelected or wherever. The short right term answer. memory is good. Yeah. I said, in regards to that committee right. over the summer, you what I'll try to do is, is throw some dates and locations out there. You know, maybe, I don't yeah. know, maybe even a barbecue or something. I don't know, something creative. And mm -hmm. that if we all want to participate in that, we will. The very fact that the more that we have, we'll reach a quorum. We will have to produce minutes, but I'm asking that the committees, the subcommittees, produce minutes just the same. When you're under a quorum, you don't have to, but I'm going to ask you to, all right, as a report back to this committee that can then be attached to the minutes. So everybody, this is on the record on this. So just want to make sure we're clear on that. Now I'm going to move away from that. The May meeting I already went over. Mm -hmm. The next meeting, there will be no time for anything other than the seminar. Mm -hmm. All right? So anything else that we discussed, and Brian's taking a lot of notes here, we'll move into the June meeting more as our goals and the other things that we discussed putting in that June, that June meeting. July, if that's okay with everybody, we'll use the July regular meetings to finalize what um, the Rules Committee comes up with, mm -hmm. okay, for those two meetings. And then when we get to September, we've already got half the year laid out, guys. Yeah. All right. When we get to September, that'll be the wrap-up on the schools from this year. Mm -hmm. All right. And I will send this all out to you. And then I have already made a schedule by department. The only... Um, regular meeting that isn't taken um, as far as an agenda is the one in October. I don't have anything lined up for that yet, so I might just leave that free for what's pressing from now till then. All sure, right. Yeah, we'll have no problem filling that. I am sure. Well, we don't. <laughs> but then after that, all of the workshop sessions are rigid. All right. And you will get a list of the departments that will be in and what nights they'll be in. The the meeting schedule is a little helter-skelter for those of you who haven't been with us. You'll see it when I send it out to you. There will be some weeks that you will have two meetings. There will be some weeks that you won't have any. And the bulk of the meetings is the beginning of November and the beginning of December. We clearly bypass the holiday weeks. Okay, so that's it. It's never hurt anybody here and never been an issue. Anything else under, oh, the secretarial posting. I explained it. I'm not going to go over it. We have a limited budget. That's why we're working on some of the notes ourselves in these quiet times, as I put it. We will um, post for a secretary probably for our September meeting and hire somebody. Why don't you hold off until we start on the budget, like in October, November? Oh, from September. From September, it'll start to get important. Yeah. Um, and we we have a diminished budget ourselves, plus an increase for, the for that position. Um, I, while we're on film, anybody interested in being our secretary can certainly contact me, knowing that um, no decisions will be made probably until September, based on the budget. And, and I thank Brian for helping me with this. That's truck all by itself. They have to work in the summer at all. Mm. So there's that one. Mm -hmm. And now anything else under this? Just a question. Um, uh, Jerry, you had um, some information on the performance to date for the budget. Where, where did you get that? Or how no, no, th this report is published monthly. Uh, well, well, well it, it, March, it, it, just, it, March just came uh, out. By yeah. Let me clarify this. Everybody here should, who has emails should have gotten one, and you did not. I did okay. not either. And you did not. Okay. No. So, Christy, you didn't get one either. No, I didn't. You didn't either. I can forward you. Why I can forward them to everybody. I'll re-forward them no, to No, no, no. I want to just be, no, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you guys, but on my email, you guys were all copied. That's why I'm asking you. So, Glenn, you didn't get one? The last email I got from 
the com in regards to the committee was the uh, minutes from Miss Rice mm. and her resignation letter. Yeah. You, didn't yeah. get, you, didn't you should have gotten one from Christy. Christy. You didn't get one from Christy. Well, yeah, she's never Christy. Mike, did you get one from Christy? I oh, yeah. got it. You got one. That's what I'm trying to discern here. Sonny, did you get one from Christy? No, Bob, did you get one? You didn't get one. Okay. Jerry, did you get one from yeah, Christy? Yeah, but I don't want to print. I don't want to use my printer and ink. No, no, so no, I, no. I'm just asking. I got a letter. I just came here to get my report. The thing is, some of you got them and some of you didn't. I'm not the one sending them in to you guys yeah. anymore. Christy is, so I'm trying and to figure her up out. And I called her up and I said, I'll be just sending it. And Mike, you don't get one. Did you I get got, yours? Yeah. All right. I got one, but uh, Scott, just for town, yeah, Madam yeah. Chair, just as a point, just as a point, it's available. Christy prints them. There's a there's a little mailbox, a mailbox just outside of her office, and it's and it's marked Budget Committee, and she prints enough for each of us if we wanted to start. No, buying. she only printed no, she, five copies. That's the whole thing. Is that she's oh, only, only printed five yeah. copies? Let me take this back again. One left up there Excuse no, me, one up. minute, gentlemen. Again, this year we folded our money for printing and all of that in, so it's very important because you're going to get everything as much as I can get out there to you. All right, in emails. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, this comes from different sources. All right, the minutes will come from the secretary and so on and so forth. So I'm just trying to traffic who needs it, who doesn't. I have four people, two of which were on the list last year, so I don't know why you're not getting them. But I'll go back and correct that. Scott, I'll, the sheet, I've got the sheet back here someplace with everybody's email on it. Yeah, it, it's, it's mine is right here. It's okay. at Macarius.com. So I'll make it a point for both of you and both of you down the end of the table to make sure that that goes out. I will send you a copy um, when I go home. Thank you. So that I know you have it. I have I one more. You my ink, Jeff. <laughs> Jerry, I'm not going to go over it tonight. Okay. You brought out a really good question. You know what? Um, let's go back to the process that we were using for the questions to the department heads. If when you go through the financials, you have a question, send it to me. I will send it to the department heads. And unfortunately, from a time constraint, we can't do anything next meeting, but I promise you we will go over all questions in June. Fair enough? Yeah, I'm okay. I all mean, right. I just, uh, I'm wondering if, in fact, when we get these reports, um, they're old. They're yeah, they're a good. Halfway this is like I just month. got it mid mid April and it's yeah, already yeah, March. Yeah. Right. Well, but, uh, but they they do. It takes time to put these together. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it, it really does. You're never going to get them right after right. the end of the month's cutoff. They come out about mid month. One one thing I noticed again though, sand, no money spent, no money spent. No and we had Rick at January, February, <laughs> March. Yeah. I you know what? I no I money spent. And the yet we budget. We, the other thing we'll want to know, too, is how much money we're getting back from the feds um, for the days that they yeah, did declare a disaster. Back. Well, no, there is some. Well, they got to cover your first days. storm. Two days? Yes. Yeah, Not the, the first three, storm. huh? Your first storm, mass whatever that is. Mass got three, and then they're going on appeal. Well, no, it turns out that Mass only got the two days as well. They, the news just came back. Right. They're reformulating it. Board of was saying, well, oh, if Massachusetts is getting all yeah. three storms, yeah. why aren't we getting turns out mass was only uh, two days. emergency approved for the same two okay. days. But that will be revenue in this year? Yes. Okay, so we do want to keep I mean, track really of that. All right, calibrate. anything else before we adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn. I'll second, second that. Second no. it. Did anybody have a question before we adjourn? Thank you. Don't be question. so fast. What time are we jump. adjourning? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right now, 8.45. Quarter or nine. 8.45. All in favor? Madam Chair, in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, could you ask for a vote? I already got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank I you, think Jim. we all got Thank it. Thank you, Larry. <laughs>